Um, so, thank you for reminding me. It's uh, an honor to be here. And I agree that it's really a tough act to follow up to you, Liz. Wow, you almost made me cry. Yes. So, and, and also, I must say that uh, throwing everything I, I thought I was going to say overboard here and going off piece a little bit, uh, I, I must say that, I mean, I started at sea almost 30 years ago as an engine apprentice in 1990 in Sweden. And of course, I have my share of. Uh, well, challenges, to, to put it mildly, being a, a woman in a male-dominated industry. But still, you see how polarized this is, because even be thinking of the, the hassles, the challenges, the things I've met, this has still been in a context where I have actually been living and working and being employed in a country who has always been in the top five in the Gender Gap Index, published by the World Economic Forum. So many of the, the demands that you were describing here is, is that, that is, we sold that 50 years ago in Sweden. I mean, it, I think it was, became a law that it was forbidden to, to fire a woman because she was pregnant in 1921. So, so it's like, yeah, we've, we've done that. So I, I still, that, that the challenge that, that many of, of you other ladies face are so much greater, so which makes it even more <laughs> so it makes it such a great effort. Really. I'm so impressed. So, but the, I must say, I mean, it, as you say, this is not this. Uh, uh, what would you call it? Pity party. No, no. I must say that most of my experience on board have been brilliant. I have had such amazing experience. I met so many wonderful people that has really shaped me as a person and as a professional over all these years. So it is really. I don't regret it one bit. I must say. Uh, and also, I, I can't, I, I really I don't understand why not, why not more people go into to engineering because it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's fun with the problem solving. So I do recommend it to everyone. <laughs> Technical background. Thank you, Cecilia. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, just on that note, that um, we need to educate more boys and girls in STEM subjects. Given new developments in technology, digitalization, decarbonization. Yes, I do. And, and, and I was actually coming to that. I, I will speak more about it when, it's, when I talk about the, the one change that I want to do. But, but I mean, one of the, when you think about the, the, the maritime industry, I mean, most of the, the images you have is uh, of a, a captain, or a male captain, of course, standing there with the binoculars. Or staring at the sun, and I mean, honestly, how many hours per week are you actually doing that? So, so why not share how how exciting the, the work can be that is done all over all over the vessels? And uh, <clears throat> but I also, I mean, even if we are in a country with one of the top five, as I said, and we've always been in the top, fighting between Norway and Finland, not not Denmark for some reason, no days here. Nobody who dares, dares to admit that they're from Denmark. No, no but the, the Nordic countries, <laughs> apart from, from Denmark, has always been in the top. And still, of course, there have been challenges. And when the Me Too movement hit us all in, in 2017, I, I think there were actually no women who became surprised. I mean, it, it came to us no surprise, the Me Too movement. It was just a, a flooding of, of messages and, and stories shared and in Sweden the Me Too movement became great really really an eye-opener for many industries and many sectors and the maritime industry was one of them and of course we had our own hashtag it was called Letta Ankar or Anchors Away because we, we find it, it's time to really weigh the anchor now. We can't keep on doing this shit that we've been doing for so many years. It's time to take the next step. And in this small country, it's only about 11,000 seafarers at any time in the Swedish seafarers. Right? So in this really small industry, in a small country, there were over 1,100 women who joined this closed Facebook group on um, Let the Anchor, I think it's away sharing their stories, their experiences. And it was a woman who has worked before, like me, 30 years ago, and it's women working now. And it's women in all positions, working as captains, engineers, ABs, also in the service crew, because I want to remind you that also 
people working in the service departments on, on, on vessels and on cruise ships are also seafarers. And they were sharing the stories, and many of the stories were actually shared for the first time. It was the first time ever they talk about this. And it was such a relief, it became some sort of debriefing event, I would say, to actually, wow, I am not the only one, other people. I mean, it's not me who's to blame, I'm not the one who's at fault here. This is happening to, to other people as well. And among the witnesses that was shared in this closed Facebook group, it was only from, from this, things about like the sanitary problems you were discussing, how you how you act when you wash your clothes because you don't want anyone to play around when you're underwear or, or so you don't want to find them somewhere else. And it was uh, belittlement, things like, oh yeah, little little friend like this, to, to uh, incidents that you'd actually find it is, is criminal to rape, abuse, that sort of thing. So you could find the, the whole, the entire range there of things. And I must say that this, um, these witnesses was really an eye-opener because even if it doesn't, didn't really come as a surprise to us women, it did come as a surprise to a lot of managers and people out there who had no idea how often this happens and how many severe incidents that you actually have on board because they had turned this blind eye to it. So a uh, couple of the, the women in, in this Facebook group, they did a YouTube clip and I would be happy to share it because it's online. And uh, realizing that not uh, that many people speak Swedish, we have actually arranged so it's English subtitles. So I, I encourage you to watch this YouTube clip, it's about 10, mi uh, 10 minutes long. But I warn you, it's not a happy story, it's not something you want to do with your kids and you really have to be strong and prepared to actually discuss it and think about it afterwards. Because it's women sharing these stories and we sent it out to the media and we sent it out to the shipping industry and I'm happy to say that the Swedish maritime industry has really come together as one force. So now we have a task force, we have a project group with members of the ship owner associations, uh, the Swedish uh, unions for the uh, officers unions and also the seafarers unions, the universities. Uh, WISTA is a part of it, uh, there are representatives from, from the, the women, the Letta Anka group. And uh, have I forgot the group now, Lena? There are so many... University maybe? Yeah, university. There are so many. So, so all the, the social partners and all the actors, the stakeholders in the shipping industry has actually joined together. And we have a, a vision, we set a, have a set of objectives and a project plan for how we actually do this. So, times are changing. It's slow, painstakingly slow, but uh, it's, it's actually moving. And I think just that we're actually talking about it has been a game changer. We're talking about it, and I find that it's easy to talk about it with men, but it's also, I find personally, I find a greater support among other women that we talk about this in a, in a different way than that we did just five years ago. And that's, I think that's the thing, and I, I'm actually thrilled to be living in this era now because it's a game-changing era, and I think it's so cool to be here and be part of, part of this. Yeah. Thank you very much.